Good morning, everyone. Hope you all had a good uh, weekend. Had a good restful weekend or was it a busy weekend? Enjoyed your weekend, all of you? Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. So are you all meeting in churches or uh, or is it still online? Okay, online in Nepal. Okay. Erin, you are meeting in church. Okay, Prince also in church. <laughs> How's the situation, COVID situation in Nepal, Dave? The, the th third wave is kind of uh, it past few weeks uh, was not very good. Okay. There were a lot of cases, but now it's going down. Okay. It's been going down. Now. Okay. Okay, that's good to hear. It's going down. So in Kolkata also, it's in in-person. How is the situation in Kolkata? Yeah, ma'am, it's good, it's little bit. Good. Okay. Okay, so anyone remembers what we uh, did last class? What are we basically studying? What is the topic we are studying? Come on, class, at least a topic. We've been studying that the last uh, at least three, four classes. No one knows the topic? Okay, the developmental needs. Thank you, Prince. Uh, developmental needs of uh, children. Uh, we saw the developmental needs of the younger age groups. And then last week, we looked at the developmental needs of uh, um, children uh, six to nine years old. Okay. Uh, today we look at um, developmental needs of uh, children who are um, uh, 10 and 12 or 11 and 12 years old. Okay. And then we will look at those who are teenagers, preteens and teenagers as well. And uh, we'll um, end with um, uh, Hopefully, today's class will be the last class we're talking about developmental needs of children, okay? So we look at today the developmental needs of children ages 11 and 12, year, 12 years. Those are those who are in 6th uh, and 7th standard, okay? Now, what is the goals of um, this age? They're basically uh, people or children who are learning more about their strengths, their talents, their abilities, um, they're learning to make friends and how to basically get along well with others. Uh, they're able to, uh, they're trying to understand and trying to learn how to handle their own emotions. Basically, these are pre-teenagers, um, pre-teens. <clears throat> so they're going to, they're in the transition stage from being uh, children to growing into adulthood. So, you know, it's a very, very, uh, turbulent time, difficult time, challenging time, and also um, a very uh, a time where they need to take a lot of care, caution. They need a lot of help, uh, support, um, and also um, you know exciting time for most of them. All of us have been preteens. All of us have been teenagers, so we know the uh, you know the the challenges, the struggles, and also the happy times that uh, we had as. Uh, preteens or as teenagers okay so they're learning basically how to handle their emotions because they are in a very moody uh, uh, their emotions are like a roller coaster sometimes up sometimes down um, and they're also learning how to resolve conflicts basically uh, how to resolve conflicts with uh, friends or 
more so with their uh, parents okay they are good readers so it's a good age for us to get um, children in this age group to basically um, you know read their bibles um, practice reading their bibles every day so it'd be good if you give them uh, portions um, of uh, you know to read um, uh, uh, each day in the week and maybe if they can just write down uh, one or two things that they just learn from that it will be very very helpful um, so you know get them into a practice um, uh, more so like a habit of reading God's word because if it becomes a practice it becomes a habit a lifestyle you know they'll continue reading God's word and we know God's word is truth God's word is power God's word is life God's word is a fire that cleanses water that uh, fire that purifies uh, you know it's um, water that cleanses is like a hammer that breaks the hard heart uh, it also is um, the word of god that uh, encourages and strengthens and will build them up okay so get them into practicing to reading um, god's word um, <clears throat> they're also able at this age to use information to write um, short reports and papers uh, so it's a good time to get them to write down, uh, you know, what they have uh, understood about a particular passage or what, you know, you've taught them something, um, but you can get them to just jot down points, to write down what they've understood about what was taught, uh, give them, uh, you know, because they're good at writing and they can write fast, um, give them reflective questions, you know, uh, questions that... Um, will reflect back on what you taught them, uh, theological truths, truths from God's word, um, uh, truths about God, his nature, his ways of doing things. So more reflective questions that can help um, to bring about the learning uh, in a more better way and also to help them to really study the Bible in a, in a, uh, in a, in a more uh, deeper way, in a more better way, rather than just reading it and saying, okay, I finished doing my responsibility. It's like brushing your teeth and say, okay, I'm done with it. You know, uh, it's, it should not be like that, but something that will get them into uh, questioning, thinking, reflecting, uh, and then, you know, jotting down what they have really understood. Also writing down um, what they have learned and how they're going to apply. Um, ask them to practice it during the week and then they, maybe they can write it down uh, how they have uh, practiced it, okay? Now, children in this age, they love uh, complex games. They're very, um, uh, you know, they love to play games, um, but their excitement level is not as high as children in grade uh, uh, three, four, five, uh, you know, of, uh, six and seven are, yeah, there is a kind of excitement, but there is they also kind of withdraw uh, sometimes. So uh, you can a good age to get them to, um, you know, learn scripture portions, have Bible quizzes, um, and also uh, teach them the importance of uh, playing uh, fair, um, being honest, and also how to play safely because they're so excited, super excited. Uh, they love to. Um, <coughs> sorry, play the fool uh, at times, uh, which can, you know, hurt some other child, they can hurt themselves. So very important that, you know, they get too excited when playing the games, um, especially when you're playing more complex games like running, jumping, you need to ensure safety measures are there for them and also give them, you know, uh, uh, guidelines on how they need to play the game. They love to do uh, art and craft, uh, complex art and craft, um, and they also are learning new skills, uh, painting, sculpture, beadwork, uh, you know, uh, painting on t-shirts and, and all of those things. So some of them even get into uh, love to cook and to bake and uh, to do a lot of things. So at home, parents could utilize this uh, age group to get them into doing house chores or house, um, uh, uh, you know, get them Get parents can get these children to help them in their home responsibilities or the work that needs to be get uh, to get done at um, home. Okay, so it'll also teach them um, and give them some uh, skills that they can learn uh, for life. 
um, and will help them in the future. So it's a good age to also uh, train them. When it comes to um, uh, children's church or Sunday school, you can teach them to take responsibility because they're very active, enthusiastic uh, at this age. You know, they're quiet, but uh, they love to take on responsibility so you can encourage them uh, to do something in the children's church or Sunday school like cleaning up uh, you know the classroom cleaning up the area or when it comes to when we have VBS or the summer vacation school Bible school that you have you know just serve snacks help the smaller children bring them from class take them back to class get them part of the worship team as well if they play any instruments or they love to sing of course they need training but you can guide them help them um, when you have a general session in uh, children's church or in sunday school they can do the opening prayer closing prayer they can pray for the offering they can take offering um, and they can just help uh, in any which way uh, you need them to okay uh, so it will be a good time to mold them to train them to give them responsibility so they can take it on uh, and build on it later on and also because they are enthusiastic, they learn, love to learn new skills, uh, you can get them to serve others, okay? Serve even church, maybe uh, serve tea or coffee or uh, welcome people. You can do this as, you know, once in a month or, uh, you know, once in three months. They'll be excited. They love to do things in adult church because uh, they're growing from, uh, they don't see themselves as more like children or kids. They look at themselves like you know now young people adults so they love to do things so in adult church so you can get them to help out there as well and also take them for um, uh, you know to visit the elderly the sick the needy uh, just do some things to help them out and they they will just enjoy it but they're praying for them or, you know, just having a meal with these people, helping them out and things like that, or spending some time, uh, they would like to do it, okay? Um, they also like to pray together or individually, so get them to pray in group prayers, teach them the importance of praying, teach them how to pray so that, you know, it will build in them up um, uh, a pattern to, um, um, to you know, uh, pray for others as well, Okay. You can have a lot of uh, quiz for them, uh, get them to learn Bible passages, uh, like I said, for the other age group uh, last class. No good to get them to learn the books of the Bible, uh, Psalm 23, Psalm 121, Psalm 90, Psalm 91, all of those Psalms, Psalm 100, Psalm 1. Uh, different portions about, uh, you know, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, all of those things are good age for them to memorize things. Uh, what is love, uh, the books of the Bible. Uh, so just get them to memorize, also get them to uh, memorize their favorite um, verses in the Bible because these are times when they can learn and memorize or uh, will come back into memory even after they have uh, grown old. Okay, So most of the things that I had memorized uh, in scripture was what, was what I did when I was uh, in these age groups. And I still remember all of those scripture um, portions. So good age for them to learn. You know, I remember that um, <clears throat> I went to this uh, Martoma camp in summer. Uh, you know, uh, the Martoma church uh, basically has all their um, uh, children from all, across all um you know, churches in Bangalore City and I think from uh, outside Bangalore as well, they attend um, a camp. Uh, and then, you know, they have a competition where they have to recite Psalm 119. <laughs> you know, uh, such a long psalm, but they say it word perfect. You know, they'll just stand in front of the audience and they'll just say the entire Psalm 119. It'll be word perfect. If I mean word perfect, it is word perfect. So you see children at this age can really learn scripture. Uh, don't uh, min limit them or think they can't do it. Uh, it's a good age for them to learn. Okay, um, Encourage them to treat others kindly um, because they struggle in this area. 
so you can discuss about first uh, corinthians 13 about uh, what is love love is patient love is kind does not envy does not boast all of those things uh, teach them the commandment uh, that jesus gave us to love um, the lord our god with all our heart soul mind and strength love our neighbor as ourselves um, discuss about how you can they can practice and treat others with love um, because this is an age where they are preteens they're getting very irritated emotional also their relationship with their parents um, how to treat others with love um, and also you can use uh, you know scripture par passages or narratives uh, to help them discuss ways to resolve conflicts in peaceful and mature ways and how to speak um, the truth in uh, love, how they can express uh, their frustration or their anger uh, with calm words and how to seek um, resolution. So you can use all of these topics because they basically are struggling in these areas and you can teach them how to love others, basically love God first and then his love will, <coughs> sorry. And um, his love will help them to uh, enable them uh, to love others. Okay, so um, these are the areas where they really need help and uh, building up. Uh, good not to just keep on giving them all information, but uh, just throw it open to them to discuss, to um, analyze things, to see how the person in that specific narrative um, reacted, why they did so, how how can they uh, do so the same or how will they react in a different way if they were in the same situation you know it's good to get them to think because they like to think uh, make it more reflective for them don't give them all the answers because as preteens they don't like to be told what to do and what not to do so you know and they're capable in a position to answer to think um and you all you need to do is just you know guide them and channelize them in the right way Okay, encourage them about spiritual disciplines like praying, um, giving offering, reading their Bibles. Uh, they're able to understand abstract ideas now. Um, so you can teach them about Trinity, uh, atonement for sin, Holy Spirit, about the person work of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. You can talk about the Old Testament prophecies, um, uh, you know, which foretells of the future, the coming of the Messiah, also about the Old Testament prophecies regarding the uh, signs of the, you know, rapture, the end of age, old and new covenants you can discuss about. You can also give them uh, uh, an overview of the Bible uh, in terms of um, them finding out how the Bible uh, you know, is one unified whole, how everything is, uh, you know, is uh, happening in history, but how everything is happening perfectly in unity uh, in history, nothing is contradicting uh, history, um, and how it all falls in line with the historical facts and the truths, and how everything is um, also going to work out, uh, you know, to prove uh, the prophecies um, and it's going to happen in history, okay? Um, and also talk about what uh, Jesus, um, who Jesus is, what was revealed about him, the prophecies of Jesus' work, his incarnation, uh, his beginning, and um, how he came, he became, became a human being, how he lived on this earth. So you can tell them about Jesus from beginning to end. You can also teach them about the different books of the Bible uh, and um, who wrote the different parts of the Bible and why. Okay, now they are um, this age group, as preteens, they're looking for a lot of answers. So you can provide them um, answers and um, uh, to their specific questions like, Who is Jesus? Why did Jesus come? Why or how does God love me? What am I supposed to do with my life? Okay, so these are some things that they really are trying to get information about so you can help them. <clears throat> The spiritual messages they need to hear is salvation message, uh, that they can accept Jesus, um, you know, uh, that God loves them uh, and everyone else. God knows all about them. He loves them just like they are. It's a wonderful plan for their life. God will never leave them nor forsake them. They can trust God. 
God is all powerful, all knowing and always present with them. There's nothing they need to go, do to make God love them more or less. Jesus is the way they're saved by grace and they can tell others about uh, what Jesus has done for them. Okay. So these are some things that they need to hear. They're saved by grace. Um, and Jesus loves them, okay? Now, mentally, these children are uh, very, very curious. They ask a lot of questions. Uh, they love to reason and discuss. So don't just, you know, um, give them everything. Uh, they'll be bored. Get them to reason, to discuss, to think, to analyze. Um, uh, they begin to develop longer attention spans, but if you keep on talking, it's not going to help. You need to get them to discuss with you, analyze, give their opinions. Um, okay, so they can also memorize, like I said. Uh, they're developing self-confidence, so you need to encourage them and build them up in that area. Uh, they can think abstractly. I've already mentioned that. Um, they have a mature sense of time and uh, the you know the the situations they are in the space they are in um and they also know as the adults are not always right they also have their own faults their own weaknesses uh, so they need to think they need to understand um, what they're trying to mean and say and sometimes they can also be wrong uh, now as preteens they want a lot of independence so they try to make their own decisions uh, so you know, you can let, allow them to, but, uh, you know, guide them and channelize them in the right way. Physically, um, they're growing. Uh, they enjoy being active. Uh, they want to participate rather than watch. Um, they mature at different rates. You know, girls, um, their growth rate is much faster than boys. Maturity as well. Um, they love to compete um, and they are now becoming very conscious about uh, the opposite sex. So girls are very conscious about the boys. Boys are also conscious of the uh, girls. Okay. Spiritually, they are asking a lot of questions about Christianity. Um, they kind of uh, evaluate different points of view. They enjoy participating in worship. Uh, so you can get them to lead in worship or sing or uh, just basically play the instruments or you know do actions some of them are very good at choreography so they can do actions for the songs so that all the children are also able to follow them and do them because you know it's one among them who's doing the actions um, they also learn to apply what they have learned uh, from the Bible or the Bible biblical truths to their own moral behavior. Um, they like to share in all the church activities and participate in the church activities. Um, so you can get them to do that as well. Okay, socially, they're learning to, um, you know, how they can be better friends, how they can keep their friends, not fight. Um, they're also strong, have strong feelings about what is right and wrong. Um, so sometimes if they hold on to something that is wrong as right, they'll be very strong about it. Uh, so don't get, um, uh, you know, alarmed or don't get, uh, you don't feel cornered by them or don't get angry, uh, but just help them to think through, uh, you know, help them to analyze and help them to see that what they're saying is right, uh, what this, what the uh, no wrong they're seeing and they're saying is right is actually wrong and how, uh, you know, uh, help them uh, analyze things and judge for themselves, uh, okay? They need to belong to a group of friends so they can also get into their own small, small groups and clicks. So it's very difficult for you to move them out and, you know, even when they're playing games or having quiz, they like to be in their own small, small um, groups. Uh, they like to belong to a group because that is kind of building their identity, their values, uh, and who they are. It's defined by their friends. Um, and they're learning to actually relate both to boys and girls. Uh, they're learning to become more responsible and dependable. Um, so you can just give them responsibilities and guide them and help them uh, to be responsible and dependable, okay? 
Now, when you are providing activities, give them more challenging activities. Uh, give them time to reason, to think, uh, to solve problems. So it's good to give them various situations, scenarios. Okay, you can say like, you know, um, uh, Robert, uh, you know, if you're talking about sin, you can talk about uh, Robert who was in school, you can give them a, you know, a, a scene or you can present a scene or you can give them a situation which Robert was involved in and then you can get them to discuss what do you think Robert should have done, what do you think Robert shouldn't have done, why did he behave like this, why did he behave. And so when, they, when you give them time to think and reason and bring out their viewpoints and then get them, guide them in the right way, they're able to take information better. Uh, rather than you saying this is the way you should do it, this is what how you should be, this is how you should live, it's going to not go down well with um, them. Okay, um, important uh, to provide an atmosphere of trust and acceptance that they are accepted, uh, and also a, a, a place where they can be trusted with what they're going through, what they're experiencing, their challenges, their difficulties, because they're preteens, they're going through a lot. So, you know, giving them that place of acceptance or trust or building relationships of acceptance and trust will really help, okay? Give them a variety of activities to do, creative activities. Uh, avoid uh, any kind of comparison or competition between girls and boys. Uh, get them into groups where boys and girls are part of each group. It will just help. Um, uh, encourage them to read the Bible and apply it in their uh, their own lives. Uh, help them to understand the plan of salvation. Um, guide them in expressing their own faith. Okay, in making when you are uh, finishing each lesson, uh, make sure that the application is something that they can do here and now in today's time uh, through the week. It's not something that is very vague. For example, if you're talking about love, just don't say we need to love everybody. We need to be kind. We need to be compassionate and caring just like Jesus was. Well, that's a very general kind of an application, but get them to specifically apply how they are going to practice or how they're going to love others. For different people, showing love can be in different ways. Uh, for one child, it'll be, I'm not going to back answer my parents. That's how I'm going to show love. Another child, it can be, I'm going to, um, you know, share with my friends. Um, that is love. For another, it can be, you know, I'm going to um, uh, care for my grandparents. That is love. So different children have different ways of exp expressing their love. Uh, so, you know, get them to uh, write down how they are going to uh, apply it. Okay. Um, and also try making prayer, worship and reading of God's word uh, a natural part of uh, their time together at children's church. Okay, they understand that God is real, he's eternal and he is supremely powerful. They know God cares for them he, and he acts on their behalf. So help them to develop a consistent relationship with God, a real relationship with God, a consistent prayer life, um, and also encourage them not to run to their friends or um, to their parents or, um, you know, um, uh, when they need help or they're in a difficult situation or when a struggle arises at home. Uh, or, um, you know, on studies, wherever. But, you know, they can just lean on God. They can just speak to God anytime, ask him and get his uh, help. Okay. So we see that, um, you know, these children, 11 to 12 years of age, uh, like I said, I, they move from childhood to um, adulthood. They're becoming slowly adults in a few years' time. Uh, so they would, um, you know, some of them want to become adults. Some of them uh, are forced to, you know, join or become adults in the near future. So everything around them is beginning to turn complex, um, even as, uh, you know, they are changing uh, physically. There's a lot of changes that are happening men uh, emotionally, uh, spiritually, uh, socially, intellectually. There's a lot of changes. There are a lot of things that they are to cope with. Um, 
so what do we expect in this age um you know uh, the boys in this age are very very competitive the girls uh, physically are maturing faster than the and the boys and we need to be very sensitive about that make them feel accepted trusted loved for cared for uh, and ensure that other children are not making fun of them um you know uh, children at this phase begin to have best friends uh, with whom they share their activities um but at the same time you know their relationships will become more complicated and competitive and also is uh, begins to change uh, this is particularly true of girls so we need to help them in this whole area of relationship and also whole area of choosing friends choices okay because they become easily affected by their friends standards lifestyles values um uh because they want to be more like their friends so they are accepted i told you they like to be part of a group that gives them basically their identity their self worth so very important for us to talk about choices basically about choosing people friends um you know and guide them in that um uh, ways it's uh, otherwise it's you know it just brings about a whole change in personality because uh, they are just there in children's church for one and a half hours but the rest of the time in school they having friends who are non christians non believers um you know unbelievers sorry and um, uh, you know they can influence them with a lot of things of the world so you need to get them to and help them to choose the right kind of um friends okay they develop a capacity to reason um and they try to work things out by their reasoning uh so sometimes they can get very a little cheeky or they can uh, you know they can give you a smart talk they can talk very smartly um but you know uh, don't take it too offensively um that is who they are uh, but they can also at the same time be very interesting and funny to be with so just help them understand what they are really trying to say um you know sometimes they can get cheeky and try to uh, fool you but you need to be very smart and um, help them through that okay um they like to be independent um so you know they're changing their their relationship with their parents is significantly changing so there's a lot of con uh, conflicts that are also arising uh, because they want to be independent their parents are still telling them what to do what not to do so you can help them also how to you know uh, resolve conflicts how to deal with their relationship with their uh, parents through various narratives in the bible okay what you can do for them so what we can do for them is uh, be conscious of the fact that they're going through a lot of physical mental emotional Uh, social and spiritual changes be um extra understanding sensitive and help them and guide them um you know um give them a, a, a you know a certain limit or a certain degree of independence um so that they know that you know yeah they have the independence but also you can guide them on how they can use their independence in the right way uh, important to hear and understand their point of view and not make fun of them and put them down or laugh at their view point if you do that they will never speak up uh, for the rest of the classes and if you listen to their view point acknowledge it uh, even though it might be totally contrary but you can guide them and lead them in the right way you can hear them out they will show interest in speaking and giving their opinions their suggestions and their view points um and it'll also show that show them that you care because you listen and you're not overriding their opinions okay um also have safety limits um and take interest in what's going on in their lives and what they are doing um you know mentoring is very very important at this age for this age group um because you need to be involved in what they are thinking what they are watching where they are going their friend circle uh, what are their view points okay so that is um basically about uh, children or uh, preteens uh, in the in this age group of um <clears throat> 
11 and 12 year old, 6 and 7 standard. Okay. Any questions? Anyone has any questions? Any questions? If not, uh, we'll move on to the last age group that is um, 13 to 18 years old. Uh, seniors who are basically more teenagers uh, will move on to this section. If there's no questions, no doubts, okay. Now these th uh, 13 to 18 year old who are seniors and basically, you know, they are the early adolescent years. There's a lot of changes that are happening physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually. Um, they're transforming or there's a transition from being a child to an adult. So from childhood to adulthood. Now what to expect? Um, um, you know, they begin, there'll be a shift that you will notice from them following rules of authority uh, you know, if you are a teacher or if you are a children's church pastor, there will be a shift from them following uh, your authority or the rules that you have laid down to doing things that uh, they think are right, they value, they want to do, uh, that will define themselves, um, basically what they feel, what they think, um, uh, rather than doing what, you know, is uh, required of them. So even as they do this, we need to be very sensitive. We need to help them. We need to guide them uh, and enable them to see uh, why rules are important. So it's good to go through, you know, com the Ten Commandments, the laws, the various rules. Why did God have all of these? Why was all of this instituted in the first place? Not to make life difficult for the Israelites, not because he wanted to get them to do what he wanted, but it was just for their own benefit, for their own um, uh, life, well-being, wholeness, that he gave them these laws. So help them to see it in that way. Um, <clears throat> now they're beginning to live independently, so they like to do things their own way. Uh, you can allow them to a certain extent, but sometimes when you they have to follow certain rules which everyone are doing it, you can just encourage them you know, uh, say it in a more positive way and uh, help them and guide them, okay? Um, <clears throat> they begin to de develop a capacity to think in much broader terms. Um, they begin to, uh, you know, understand the issues and see how things are connected to each other. Even difficult abstract ideas, they're able to think through, reflect, um, <clears throat> So it's um, good to get them to reflect and to take responsibility, um, to share their viewpoints, get them to see parallel views, contrasting views, uh, and uh, let them help them make their own judgments and um, guide them. Okay. Now we know emotionally they're very turbulent, so they can get very moody. Um, they can get very. Uh, sometimes they can um, just not speak up. Uh, they'll be very shy because um, uh, in this, uh, in the senior class, basically it's very difficult for them to get answers out compared to the younger classes where they're quick to answer, quick to tell what they feel, what they think, um, because they are always conscious about what others will think about them if they answer wrong or say this or say that, or people will laugh at them. So <clears throat> be sensitive about that. Um, you know, um, frame your questions in such a way that, you know, you get uh, answers more than, you know, just if you have questions which end up you receive, uh, end up, you know, in just receiving yes or no answers, then it's going to be difficult for you. But frame your questions in such a way that, you know, they have to reflect, think and give their own viewpoints. Okay. Um, they are powerful peer group relationships. They need to belong to a gang or group. So um, it's a um, good thing to get them into, um, you know, um, you know, into good relationships with each other. Also, uh, you know, not just get them to uh, stay in their own cliques, but also uh, meet and talk with uh, the, the, the rest in the class, uh, not just do things with their own friends or their best friends, but, you know, in a class setup, uh, relate with everybody, discuss with everybody, play with everybody, and learn from each other. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> even though they are struggling in their relationship with their parents uh, because they are asserting their own independence but we see that uh, uh, the family is still uh, the strong social support for an adolescent so we need to uh, get them uh, to build meaningful relationship with their parents at this age so use different passages in the bible where you can uh, help them okay <clears throat> Now, what you can do is, um, you know, um, get them to, uh, you know, um, write down the rules. Okay, once you get them to write down the rules, then it's easier because they have to follow it. Now, if you say these are the rules, you better do it, then they're going to, you know, get a little stubborn and adamant and they might not like coming to a children's church. So, you know, in the class setup, you get them to basically um, set their own rules, but you can always, um, you know, have the final say or the final word and tell them why you're uh, having this and get them to see it and um, uh, do it more in a fun way so that, you know, it's more um, uh, exciting than just something that they have to uh, follow, okay? And once you make these rules, just ensure that, you know, you get them to stick to those agreements that they have made. For example, if um, a rule like, you know, if they um, have a lot of, in this age group, they'll have a lot of things to uh, say, but they won't say it to the teacher or to the whole class. They'll keep on talking to their um, uh, their friends okay so that can be very disturbing so one rule is if they have something to say they have to say to the entire class and not just personally talk with their own uh, friends and when you are having group games that um, they're not in their own groups or cliques they have to join with others and play with others uh, or uh, you know have competitions with the others as well so simple things like that you know uh, when a teacher is talking they don't talk when they are talking the teacher doesn't talk everybody listens to them uh, when they are talking you know everyone respects their opinion we don't laugh we don't mock uh, we can say our point of view, but we respect the other per person's point of view. So, you know, negotiate some fair rules where um, it's easy to work with them. Otherwise, it will get very, very difficult. Okay. Don't criticize them for uh, their hairstyle, their clothes, uh, what, uh, you know, how they're dressed and all of those things because they get very, very sensitive. There's a lot of changes. They're kind of trying to adapt with the physical changes that are happening. They're trying to, uh, you know, be accepted, be loved. Uh, so, you know, don't make fun of them uh, or don't criticize them. Uh, keep talking to them even when you get only one word answers. You know, sometimes you think they're not listening, they're not interested, they're being very arrogant. No, they just give one word answers. Yes, no, uh, I think so. Um, uh, that's the way it was or um, I really don't know, you know. So answers like that, so maybe you can give them different scenarios. Once you give them scenarios, real life examples of different people, get them to share their viewpoints, then maybe you will have a better uh, <clears throat> response. Or you can have a short quiz, uh, short, quick um, debate, you know, um, where they are, uh, you know, debating on a certain issue where you will get all their points and um, information, okay? Um, you know, when you when you are um, uh, teaching them, be very positive, encouraging, uh, and you know, uh, be very honest with what you are telling them. Don't mince word. Don't um, compromise with things. Compromise with values. Don't compromise with um, uh, with rules. Don't compromise with how they their behavior because um, uh, those are the things that we need to uh, you know uh, be very be a little more strict about and not strict, we can say firm about uh, firm because if you are not going to be firm about those things, then they will not learn uh, to value the things of God. They will not value, uh, uh, you know, um, or they will not have a code of conduct in God's house. And that is why it's, uh, it's very sad to see that many adults who come to church when they were in children's church, you know, uh, they were treated as just kids. It's okay to do anything and everything. So when you see them come to adult church, they don't carry their Bibles, they come late. It's okay for them not to come to church on Sunday, but it's okay for them 
you know, uh, to go outing or attend a function or travel. But it's not okay for them to do on Monday, you know, because they have work, they have to get to work. Uh, it's not okay for them to go to their office without carrying their ID badges or their laptops, you know, uh, but it's okay for them to come to church without their Bible. They can walk in late, but it's not okay for them to walk in late at the workplace or walk in late to the movie theater. So we need to ingrain certain standards when it comes to the house of God. They have to carry their Bible, their tithing, their offering, you know. Uh, reading the word of God, uh, the kind of behavior, um, dress code, um, you know, all of those things uh, in the house of God is very, very important. If we are kind of compromising on these standards, then it's not going to uh, help and we are going to raise up a generation that's basically not going to value things of God because we have taught them not to and they will compromise on those things because we have uh, compromised okay um, and also be very positive and uh, encouraging but don't compromise stay honest all the times and don't do things because you know you want them to love you and feel accepted and they'll come to children's church no sometimes we need to be a little firm and it'll just help them okay listen to their uh, viewpoints and their opinions but um, don't just leave it uh, you know in in thin air but bring it to a conclusion, draw a conclusion, um, you know, and give them what is right and what they need to be doing, okay? <clears throat> give them the opportunity to reply or to participate in uh, discussions. Then they feel that they're heard out, they're accepted, um, and then, you know, they will state their viewpoints. So this is um, a few things that we can remember for uh, the ages 13 to 18. Uh, any questions, any doubts? With this, with this we finish um, the developmental needs of children in different age groups. I hope it was helpful. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can ask. No questions? I hope all of you are in class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. Thank you, Dev. Okay. If there are no questions, then um, we'll end class and um, have a good uh, day ahead and a good week ahead as well. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow for our next classes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am.